Okay. Yana, you're not recording, are you? I am recording. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, I'm Diksha. I'm a third year podiatric medical student at CSPM. And today we're going to add on another wonderful episode about exploring the nine podiatric medical schools. Again, why are we doing this? It's because we're only students at CSPM and we don't know enough about all the other podiatric medical schools. And so we wanted people who are qualified to talk about their specific medical schools. And so today we have Stephanie and Tolu from Step Into Pod. They are an Instagram channel and they have an IG Live that they're constantly doing. And it's to promote awareness about podiatry and also just talk to you about the perks and what it's like day in and day out of being a podiatric medical student. I have all of their information in the description below. So check that out. And without further ado, let's watch Stephanie and Tolu. Thank you so much, Dishka and Yana, for having us on your channel today. My name is Tolu. I'm a second year at Barry School of Pediatric Medicine, and I am from Miami, born and raised. And my name is Stephanie Ararade, and I'm a second year also at Barry Podiatry School, and I'm from Southern California. And today, we're going to be asking some common questions that prospective students may have when inquiring about Barry School of Pediatric Medicine. So our first question is, what's the area like? Things to do, to eat, safety, and weather. So um, the weather in Miami is very warm, it's humid, you don't have a winter, so that's something you should expect um, while being here. We also, um, a lot of things to do here from good food, a lot of a Caribbean vibe we have, as well as um, with safety, it depends what area you're living in, so you always want to check out the specific city you're looking at within Miami. Um, we have the beach that you could do, there's a nightlife, there's restaurants, um, you have the Keys which are close by, and also you have Disney World not too far north. Um, the next question is what is the living situation like? Um, in regards to living here, um, you do have a good price range um, on where, depending where you live. So the closer you live to the city, for instance, Brickell is a really popular area in Miami in that will have a higher price range probably for um, a one bedroom you might find it around like 1500 to 1800 right yeah. there. if you live closer to the suburbs or by the school then you will have a little bit lower than that for a one bedroom but you do have the option of living with roommates which will help drop that price but my budget when I came here was around 1400 a month for a living safety is a big issue down here um, there's some areas you don't want to be in at night um, and since I'm living by myself as well my budget around was like 15, 1600, just because it's like the safety reason. So you want to live on like the better side of Miami, and it's a little bit more pricier. The next um, question would be class sizes and what classes we take our first year. So um, the class sizes, our class was around 67 students, and that's kind of the average we get. I would say the cl the classes we did take were uh, our first semester we took gross anatomy, our yeah. favorite. Dr. Kali, shout out to you. <laughs> we did biochemistry one. Yes. That's her favorite subject. Yes, I love biochemistry. We did histology. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we did histo. What else did we do? We did intro to pediatric medicine. Yes, which they changed for this year. It's going to be a patient care and that they're having the first year actually go, first years go into the hospitals to kind of get that clinical exposure. Oh yeah, a research statistics class. and We did physio one, our spring semester. Yeah, spring semester. We did neuroanatomy, mm -hmm. um, lower okay. extremity anatomy part one because you do part one and part two. And then biochemistry, and then biochemistry too as well. Too. Um, do we have any research opportunities at our school and does our school have a research lab? Um, we do have research opportunities. I don't feel like they're kind of broadcasted with the incoming classes. Um, I know we do have like third years who do it and they work with the professor, some of the professors who are in research and um, through ACFAS as well that we have some people doing research. So for the research, um, I know there, like she said, some third years are doing it. You kind of like, it's like, it's not like a process. You kind of approach the professor you take an interest in and see that because most of the professors in our program usually do um, research outside of teaching and being in clinics. So you kind of approach that professor and I think you're bringing them a topic if they're not working on something already and they kind of like bring you along. As opposed to research labs, I don't really think we have it, but I know we do share a building with like the biology students and PA students. So they are like biology labs that they kind of use temporarily for their research if they need to you know, perform experiments. 
Do you have clubs at your school and how active are they? We do have clubs. Um, we have quite a few, so you are able to find what you do like. Um, the popular ones I would say are ACFAST, which it has a lot of involvement. They actually had a lot of our workshops. We have um, HPMSA, which is um, for the um, as a Hispanic um, centered organization. They also had quite a few workshops do because we are in Miami, so that one is a big club for us. Um, we all sports medicine is one we really love too, and um, we were actually supposed to go to the Miami Heat locker room and like watch the game. And then um, from radiology, we, we have, have radiology, we have forensics club, we have AAW, which is like an American, um, it's like for women, mm -hmm. um, podiatry. We have SNAPMA, the yes. one for minorities. So there's just so many different clubs ranging from like surgery based to sports medicine based. Yeah, and if not, you're always op you're always welcome to create a club if you want to, and you'll find one that you do like, so. Yeah. Do you have a gym and a cafeteria located on campus? So Barry Podiatry is definitely shared with an undergraduate um, school. It's actually a private institution. So they do have a gym, they do have a cafeteria. You are allowed, as a Barry Pod student, you are allowed to use the gym freely. I um, mean, you are allowed to go to the cafeteria. You do have to pay a fee, I think it's $5, and you have like an unlimited buffet. You can eat as much as you want. Once you get into the cafeteria, pay the $5, you're able to go through. Eat as much as you want, take as much as you want. Are there any academic support services for students? So with Barry University, um, I do know that we have a mental health that they um, give each student like two free sessions per semester. But outside of that, there's not really any academic support. But Barry Podiatry does have a big and little system. So that's kind of like our academic support, you know, to kind of guide you through because like podiatry is definitely it's medical school. It's crazy. It's rigorous. So you do have people that, that are above you that they pair you with your first semester. They kind of guide you through the four years. They help you out with like resources. They help you on tips. They even give you guides to like boards as we're like starting to look to prepare for boards. It's about to be a year from now. So we kind of refer to our bigs and littles. To kind of piggyback off what she said, um, since we are attached to the undergrad, um, institution, they do have a career services as well that helps with um, our CVs when we get to that point. So. so are there any counseling services for students? Mental health. Yes, there is. There, um, I think it's under the psychological services. It's in the health department. Um, they do have that. I do remember during orientation they told us we do have two free sessions and then I forget how much they charge per session after that, but they do have that available for students. Um, everything is confidential. It's just like if you were to go see a therapist outside of the school, no one is going to know about it. Even the Barry School of Podiatric Medicine doesn't know that you're seeing a therapist. Everything is confidential. So my favorite part, most favorite part of our school, Dr. Lazito, he's the best because you know he is the sports medicine doc for the one and the only Miami Heat. Okay, I don't want to hear anything. They're the best team out there. Okay, <clears throat> yes, but he's like legit. Anybody that thinks of Barry Paul, they think of Dr. Lazito, and it's not because of only the Miami Heat. I mean, that's like the greatest aspect of it. But the fact that when you meet him in person, you shadow him, he's just so enthusiastic and passionate. He is actually one of the people that made me look into podiatry. He, the way he interacts with his patients and knows the patient's background, what they're going through, and he's not like seeing you as a patient, he's relating with you, and he's very, very full of energy, so he's my favorite part of Barry Pod. I would have to say Lizia too, and then um, just being in Miami, this is a great place to um, at least live for a couple years, and if you don't, you're able to try it out and see and diversify your life. Does the school have a special group to help spouses or family members for acclimating to medical school? So I do know some of my classmates, they do have families, but they kind of group them together. It's like a group of them um, in our program that like the first year, second years, and third years, they're all in a group and they kind of like watch their children, they made like a group where like if the husbands are like, you know, in clinics or they're rotating, the wives of them are going to be like taking turns to like watch the kids all together or if they want to go on date night. So they do have things like that, but the school itself, I can't personally speak on that. Um, does your school offer scholarships? Yes, it does. Actually, Barry is known to, they give the most scholarships out of the podiatry school, and it is merit-based, so um, just keep your grades strong, and you should get a good scholarship from them. And that is something that they guarantee for you every year if you maintain a GPA. Do you need a car, and is there public transportation? So there is public transportation, but I'm going to tell you, this is Miami, this is not New York. This is not DC. This is not Maryland or Virginia. The bus runs every six hours. I'm not even joking. 
So, if you leave in the morning at 7, you could be waiting for your bus for like 4 hours. And it's hot outside. It's humid. So I definitely highly suggest, if you're going to choose Barry, um, you definitely need a car. There's just no way around it. By the time you get into clinics, you're going to be driving north, south, east, and west of South Florida. You definitely will need a car. And relying on public transportation is frustrating. Uber and Lyft, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. There's so many stories. Just get a car. Are there any jobs that students can take on as first years in the school, such as peer tutors and note takers? So, um, unfortunately, there aren't any jobs for first years. Uh, our school likes uh, the first years to just focus primarily on their academics. So they do offer a TA position for the anatomy lab, biochemistry, and physio. Um, so our core classes, and you could do that your second year. So they just want you to keep your grades strong. First year, please do not worry about working. You need to understand how you study. You need to know what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And that's just a lot to handle without like taking on a job of like, you know, having to work as well. I feel like second year, you know, if you don't want to, you know, do the school's job, you can do stuff like babysitting or, mm -hmm. you know, if tutoring. you're like tutoring or sometimes if you can work late nights, and you can do stuff like that. But I just highly, highly suggest first year, please focus on how often are certain facilities open for students, like labs and gyms. So our anatomy lab, one thing I liked about Barry is that we have open lab um, during the week before our exam, so you can come in at any time, and sometimes it's open as early as 9 in the morning to almost 6, 7 p.m. at night, and you can be in there for hours in the cadaver lab, and it's only the bodies that the podiatry students are working on. Nobody else gets to share the bodies with you, so it's only podiatric students that are allowed in the labs. Um, you can see all the bodies from, you know, because there's two lab sections. Since there's 60 of us, they divide us 30, 30 each. And you can see different bodies. Um, the gym is open, I think, as early as 6 in the morning till about, like, late in the night, like 11 or 12 or midnight. So that's, yeah. that's good. Um, I know they just implemented 24-hour study rooms. So, like, for podiatric students, you can, you know, rent um, a study room and be there for all hours, especially during finals week. So. Does your school have any special um, ties with residency programs? We actually do have our home hospitals and clinics, so um, those are going to be tied with the residency program if you're looking to stay in Miami. It does give you a higher chance because you are exposed to the doctors that work in the clinic and they're able to see how you are as a person. But I wouldn't say there's any direct ties. I think the only one I would say that's a direct tie is the Mercy, which is a sports medicine um, fellowship, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that is a very student-led um, clinic that you have there. So that's one of the good things about Barry. And um, most of the students that, you know, rotate there and stuff, they too tend to gear more the Barry students because you've been there they for two you. years. They see you your third year when you rotate there, and they see your fourth year when you extern there as well too because you do have to do one externship at your home school and stuff. And the last thing, is there any other information that you think could help prospective students? Um, I think we pretty much covered everything, but if you pick Barry, just remember you're coming to Miami. There's no other place you'd rather be than by the beach. It's hot 24-7 all year around we don't experience four seasons um and definitely uh it can get distracting i'm not going to lie to you i was born and raised here and i tend to be distracted <laughs> but you know you definitely have to remember you're here for a sole purpose just to stay focused and to add to that i also like some of the things that differentiate very from other pedagogy schools is um it has a dual program of the dpm mba and also um they do have a, ch a cheaper tuition than the other schools and um, they give you the most scholarships so those are the three differentiating factors i feel like and and you're good this is yeah. another place where you will see very diverse patients. Yeah, and I feel like that's population. one of the biggest things that really like make you a good physician is that you can treat all pa all different patients from different races. And I feel mm -hmm. like you know Miami is the best place because we're like the melting pot of the United States. You see everyone from everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. So it's really really good. And if you're trying to you know break that culture barrier, trying to make yourself multifaceted, trying to make yourself diverse as well and stand out from the crowd, very pot is the place to come. And our class, um, the first year um, of class of 2024, they are 55% female, which is wonderful. So we're really excited about the that. Future. And we are a very diverse class in both class and faculty. So yeah, that's a big thing for us. Thank you for tuning in and thank you, Dishka and Yana, once again for having us on your channel. And we hope to meet you guys eventually.